Here we go. So I played one game in the marathon yesterday. Um, and today I'm going to continue playing in the marathon. Um, albeit with a late join. So where is this marathon? It is one of the open tournaments. I know that. Here it is. Here we go. The Autumn Marathon. We stand in 21 13th place. 2113 out of 2594. I'm hoping that today I'll be able to improve my standing. We'll see. No, but realistically, improving upon where I'm at should be a cakewalk. The real question is how far can I get with only this many hours remaining? Alright, here we go. Oops, I missed the Berserk button. Perhaps that's for the best. Okay, we need to protect this and keep the knight out and prepare this. Pin the piece. Um, protect the piece. He castles, I castle. Um, it's got a lot of attitude for being in the Arathon. Presumably he's been playing as long as everybody else has been playing. Um, yeah, I can't actually trap the bishop there, so I'm going to go for this instead. Um, okay, we have to play a rook endgame. I'm not giving up my g-pawn for nothing here. Hey, Beats. I'm just losing to a 1400 right now. I know I do tend to lose the first game in any tournament, but this is a bit absurd, isn't it? Um, oh, is this actually a winning position? That would be ridiculous. Um, I can attempt to win this. There we go. Victory is mine. And now I'm on fire for having won two games in a row. And I stand in 1904th place. H5 just tends to freak people out. It doesn't actually by itself do anything other than freak people out. Um, I can build up this battery toward the H3 square. Um, as long as the center doesn't open, I'm pretty cool with this. Oh, that's not where I expected him to move it. Um, but fortunately, I had something ready for it anyhow. Or rather, I was able to easily improvise something for that. Oh, I've sacked my deep one, quite unwittingly. And he thinks I'm doing it on purpose. Uh... 
And that's where the tides change. Yeah, I mean, what's the slow and steady stuff? It's fast and steady that wins. I mean, am I wrong? <laughs> Look, I've already made it up 300 places. At this rate, I'm sure I'll be at the top of the marathon in like five minutes, right? That's how that works. Yeah, I'm accidentally sacking an exchange. Although this one actually looks like a good sack. Um, all right, so now he's sacrificing pieces unintentionally and low on time. Okay. Still offering up my rook if you want it, buddy. Um, guess he doesn't want it. Coming up next is knight b7, trapping the bishop, which he saw. Um, he's paying attention. He may be 1523, but um, he's quite resourceful. People tend to play very well when there's actually something on the line. And I guess that's, <clears throat> that's not just um, selection bias or anything. That's... Um, People choose not to play in competitive things when there are things on the line, unless they are able to play well. Why didn't I just play queen c1 mate? Why did I go for this mate in 3 instead of the mate in 1? And I did see the mate in three, I just didn't see the mate in one. Well, I guess the reason is because I saw rook a1 was check, and I saw queen c1 mates after that. Um, and having found one way to win the game, I didn't look for anything else. Still, changing up the move order would have been really effective there. Yeah, I missed my chance to take the pawn, so now I have to suffer a little bit for it. That's not a second chance. There's my second chance. Generally, it's not worth it for black to hang on to the pawn. Um, hopefully that is indeed the case here. That just the initiative I get for black hanging on to it um, is just such a pain for black. Alright, so I'm threatening knight e7 and bishop takes rook if the queen goes, if it moves twice, basically. Um, okay, we're going to embed the knight up there. And... Um, Okay, get the rook out of harm's way. Actually, now this tactic on the corner is no longer um, there. Um, I'm choosing not to trade knights because I thought I had something here. I don't. I have nothing here. So back I go. I'm losing my b-pawn. But I am getting a... Huh, that doesn't want it. Okay. Connect the rooks. And free my queen to move out a little bit more. Um, okay. Yeah, he's going to target my knight. I'm mainly moving this as a distraction. Um, to see if I could get some kind of activity out of this kind of exchange. Um, 
That's not exactly what I was looking for. All right, we're taking this. Um, thought I had somewhere good to go with the knight. I guess I don't. All right, we'll play an end game. An end game where I give up an exchange at the start of the end game just to make it interesting. Yeah, my opponent's going to find that. And I don't have a reply for it. Um, and he found it. Um, yeah, this is hugely problematic for a wide variety of reasons. Um, least of which is that I keep hanging more pieces. Um, oh, it's giving me a chance to get my king out of the back row and not pinned. So we're going to go for that. It's a really lame chance, but it is a chance. Yeah, I'm just going to resign this. There's no winning that. I need to win more games to get to the top. Drawing is not good enough. Also, I haven't had lunch yet. Having some food would probably help me think a little bit clearer. And if my opponent would just take a second to move and not blitz out everything instantaneously, I might have time to open this food package here. There we go. Don't have any time to consume it, of course, because he just keeps moving and not thinking, but um, we'll see what we can manage, given our opponent. He's going to play queen d2 and then bishop h6 next. That's what they do here. And if I, place h, if I play h6 myself, he won't know what to do. Okay, so we're exchanging in the center. I'm down some tempi. It's not the end of the world. He might exchange on c6, and to which I don't know which way I want to take back. I think with this, because um, I have knight e5, and getting the rook on the b-file is not that important here. Can I get him to play f4? Man, I would I do wish I he would play f4 right about here. All right. So he's no fool. He knows what's up here.
if he checks me at block with the queen. Now any discovery also discovers attacks on his king. I missed queen d6. It is kind of a miracle that that queen wasn't trapped where it stood. And game. Okay, we'll take it. 15, 19th place. I do wonder what my opponent's standing is in this event. Yeah, he is one step ahead of me there. I couldn't stop that. Oh, well, that's quite fortunate for me that um, he moved his bishop that way and didn't take my pawn. I guess he trusted me. Free pawn, free pawn, free knight. Do we get a resignation? I suppose we don't get a resignation. Alright, so this guy's got a question mark next to his ratings. So I'm a little, a little hesitant to do anything against him. Namely to play anything crazy or to go berserk. Both of those options I hesitate a lot more when I don't know how strong my opponent is. Um... Okay, so I castle, drop my knight on d5, check the g5 square, and unless he manages to engineer a mating attack, I have a better uh, prospect on the queen side than he is on the king side. Um,
Okay, we might end up playing an endgame here. Yeah, that's clever. Um, I guess I'm forced to play c5, although I don't see anything wrong with playing c5. At least nothing immediately wrong with it. Um, Alright, my bishop's not serving much of a role, so I will exchange it for the knight. Interesting. Um, let's shake things up one step more. I intermezzo to your intermezzo, and now I might be able to save everything, and I might not. Um, uh, this got a lot uglier than I anticipated. All right, you got me, buddy. You just have to find the right move here. And it's not queen takes knight. Um, because here at least I get some attack and compensation for giving a minor piece for a pawn. Like, all kinds of stuff is hanging here. What you had to do was just rook takes bishop. And then it's pretty clear who's ahead in that position. Yeah, you'll find that opponents tend to be more resourceful in situations where they're forced to be resourceful. Where it's like a do-or-die moment, um, that's where creativity really strikes in, in positions where there actually is something that can be done. You'll find that opponents are generally quite good at finding the thing um, to do. Oops, we're not going to fork the Rook and the Knight here. That would be a blunder. Here's a skewer. Um... It doesn't win anything, but it does complicate. And I'm trying to complicate since he's running low on time. Okay, whoops, that's not good. Hmm. Oh, he got me. He got me for 36 rating points that he gained and however many I lost. Plus, knocked me down from my um, being on fire streak. Well, 
or whatever it's called. I guess it's called streaking in this site. Um, my opponent's playing very accurately. Kudos. He knows this opening, and I expected he would because he's the one who played it. Now we've drifted out of the opening phase, and I'm attacking. He's going to have to be equally resourceful here as he was in the opening, or his advantage that he once had will dissolve. Okay, we'll play an endgame. Endgames are fun. We'll see if he's any good at endgames. Right now I'm going to wager that no, he probably doesn't understand this endgame. I'm not claiming I understand it, but I, I think he doesn't. So I'm probably not going to lose this endgame. Whether I win it is another matter, but... Um, See, so yeah, tactically, I think I'm forcing my way through here. He has to gambit a pawn to try to keep his endgame chances alive. Um, or he has to wait for me to do something stupid like I did. Um... So this passed f-pawn is going to decide the game, provided that I don't let his a-pawn through, which I won't. It's like he thinks I haven't seen that before. Although I don't blame him. At that point, it's, it's worth playing it out, but it's not going to work. Not against me. Yeah, we'll give this a go. Going berserk is fun, and I need to do it more often, really. To remind myself that these tournaments are supposed to be fun, and it's not just a matter of going for blood every time.
All right, I'm going to tuck back on G1 there. Looks nice and safe. The fact that I went Berserk is going to probably cost me this game. Um, but I can still have fun trying to salvage it. There we go. Boy, I have salvaged this one. Yep, sometimes you just have to throw a monkey wrench in the works. I wonder if this guy was saw my latest belaboring of the fact that I don't know the Trompowski. I did do that on stream, saying that I've got a lot to learn about this opening, so... Although the one thing I remember is that, um... I should not play knight d6, is one of the key things I learned. And just, knight d6 is a bad move in the Trumpowski. Knight f6 is to be preferred um, almost universally. Okay, we'll pin the knight again. Otherwise he does knight c4 or my queen has to move. We can't have that now, can we? Okay, we'll take and check. Check. And just bring out a piece. If he does 92, okay, he's not doing that. Um, threaten this. I don't know if it does much. We'll do it anyway. Take this, go there. And that's mate. And that's what happens when you make risky moves and you don't double check them. Huh. This is interesting development on my part, isn't it? He's not going to take my knight. He's still not going to take it. Even now. Yeah. So I'm dropping my C pawn. Still offering up my sea pawn. Whoops. Ah, shit. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at everything I'm offering him. Now he's up by a rook. Um, yeah, I can't salvage this. Well played, Vichy. You got me. You got me. And these things do happen in Blitz. Um... Now hopefully not too often. But 
But yeah, occasionally you will meet a 1500 who knows his openings and knows his traps, but um, you get him down to a real end game, and he might struggle a bit. Um, but yeah, it's hard to know which are which, and going berserk is not a tournament winning strategy. Um, but it is fun. It means that I will blunder from time to time when I normally wouldn't. <coughs> um, and I think that people find that exciting. Threatening this, threatening that. Really the only solutions to move the king. Um, yeah, that doesn't quite cut it. Because there's threat number three. Alright, take one of my pawns. Or don't. I don't know how he expects to salvage this. He needs me to walk into a knight fork. Because otherwise this isn't going to go his way. Oops, he can take my rook. Oh no, whatever will I do? Rook is still being offered. He can still take my rook. Yeah, we'll threaten the knight. Just to make him realize just how bad this position is. Okay, that works. And now I'm in 1068th place. So I'm in the upper half of the tournament. I guess that means most people in the tournament have under 30 points. So another win, and I'll be top 1,000. Um, I hope. There's no guarantees, but... Um, I mean, what else would it mean, right? Pawn takes? All right. Queen f7? Nope, no queen f7. Oh, this mates too. Nice! I, I like that. We'll take that. I'm in 1020th place. I'm working my way up. Oh, the Lama Lord is playing against Soldier89KN. Here he's a good player. Alright, so no Bishop B4 there. And just castle, and we'll move into an endgame. Um, Alright. I guess this is one way forward. If I can't find a weakness on his side of the board, I could at least find some kind of pawn break. In this case, I have to exchange bishops and play f5, but I'm gaining space. And potentially getting some kind of pawn lever going. Um... Didn't really expect him to take that, because now I've got a half-open f-file. This isn't the safest thing that white could have done. I guess white's not thinking safe. He's thinking kind of exciting here. Um, no, maybe, I don't know. I don't want that. So I have to cover this square, and then that's up for the taking. Okay. So... Um, 
that's interesting. It's a good developing move. My pieces are a bit misplaced. I'm going to stop knight f5. So taking a pawn there just isn't worth it. Oh, in fact, I accidentally offered a pawn instead of taking one. I still think this is good. I'm still threatening to take that. I guess I have to do bishop f2, don't I? Man, this is getting ugly. Uh, rook f2 is forced. So rook f2, rook f2. If he takes my knight, I end up taking his knight. Except I'm not... Um, I'm actually losing material in that sequence, so I should probably pre-move something else. Well, no, if he takes with the rook, though, I can't do anything but move my rook. I'm not just going to let him get a rook for nothing. Yeah, this is the sequence I was calculating. And this is the thing I was counting upon happening. Um... So I guess I've pulled a Mikhail Tall, just not nearly as impressively. Yeah, this doesn't work either, does it? Okay, so I have to try to protect something. I'm hanging all my pieces. Um, and if I do win this, it's going to be a time scramble. can't do that either. He's constantly one step ahead of me. It's not a good situation for me to be in. Well, I hesitate to do this because I don't want to exchange rooks into this endgame. Um, I don't have much choice. Also, knowing the site mechanics helps. So knowing that two knights won't win on time, um, 
if you like know that even if you win the even if your opponent times out, it's a draw. If you have two knights, it would kind of guide your decisions that you're making. Like you don't want to trade off into something you can't win. Um. F3? Please let us see F3 here. Nope, that's not F3. That's also not F3. Well, I can't cast a lot of check now, can I? Um, yeah, this guy wants feedback. Um, so far, the only feedback I've given him is that I've taken some of his pieces. Um, that is a form of feedback. It's just probably not what he's looking for. We're going to have some more feedback here in a second. Um, okay, I've got to drop back. Yep, there's definitely going to be more feedback. That square is mine. There's nothing he can do to move me off of it. Yeah, I'm sorry about the fan noise. Um, my computer tends to overheat a lot, and so uh, I'm sorry. Maybe you didn't hear that overheat um, with an H. Um, so yeah, I'm doing the best I can to stream from this. Normally I stream from my other computer, which doesn't sound like it has an airplane taking off. Um, but here, since we're playing 3-minute with no increment, I have no choice but to use this device. Um, or completely redo the way things are laid out um, at my place and like get a desk over at where my... Um, where my gaming PC is located uh, in a common room. All right, so this square is still under my control, though this is not nearly as good as it used to be. Um, kind of freed my bishop. Please let him play d5. That's not d5. Alright, so my opponent's paying attention. He's good at blitz. Um, he's got a reasonably good eye for detail. Alright, we'll turn the tables. So he's been attacking the whole game. Why can't I attack?
Unfortunately, this is the sort of nonsense that tends to happen in 3-0 games. Because you're trying to flag your opponent, you're not caring about what's your best move. Um, shit. Okay, he didn't see it. Um, oh my goodness. This could have been so much more dramatic than it was. He didn't see d5 check. Or he undervalued it.
Okay, I'm sorry for the mic, uh, for the fan noise, but we're going to try to make this work. Um, because a stream without uh, dialogue is kind of not as entertaining. Um, so this forces Queen E2. Well, I guess bishop d3 might work. Um, it's interesting at any rate.
Before anything gets out of hand, we'll castle. All right, so we're in 453rd place. Quickly ascending the ranks, making our ways up toward Lama Lord. I'm sure it's floating at like 400 some points at the moment. Oops. Well, that's accidental. <laughs> okay. We'll make do somehow. Um, yeah, see? Transposed to an English. Exactly as planned. Um, This could be interesting. Um, did not mean to make this so interesting.
He's playing it for the win. I guess I am too. Both of us need a win uh, to continue our respective streaks. Should have played this a long time ago. I think it's still decent here, though. But yeah, when his king was out on, like, f6 and g7, this was the time for me to play rook b6. I just didn't see it. There we go. Man, MZJGP is not having a good time against me today. But I don't mind. <laughs> Poor guy. I know he tries really hard and he plays very well, but 3 0 is not, um, apparently, not the time control he can beat me in out of the two games we've played today. Maybe in general, yes, he can get me in 3 0, but. Um, might require some endgame study. Hmm. Don't want to lose that. Don't want to lose this. I don't know where this is going to go. I think bishop takes b takes is fine. Yeah, this is probably also fine. Uh, just castle and we're equal. What a delicate mess.
Can I get F4 in? F4 would be so nice. Well, this works too. So now I'm able to develop my pieces quite quickly. Um, be nice if my bishop had a good score to go to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have to take that to keep developing. Okay, this is problematic. So you can take that. I couldn't stop it. I tried. Alright, well, we're going to force him to take something. Actually, this forces an exchange of everything. And we get into a pawn endgame. Um. Okay, he's not seizing the moment there. I really don't know what to do here. So I've taken this square. Need to make sure that his king doesn't invade. And that might be tricky. Man, how am I going to hold this? This is not an endgame anybody wants. Just need to keep a level head through this, but this is going to be difficult. Oh, I shouldn't have chased the pawn. Yeah, yeah, I should have played h5. I, I, I didn't explain that, but that's what I was thinking. After I missed it, I immediately regretted it. Um, None too happy about that. I'd won like 10 games in a row, and then this guy ruins it. Bummer. Alright, only Berserk has gone Berserk. Surprising, no? Ah, I missed that. Okay, so I'm down a minor piece for a pawn. That's not good. Um, okay, minor piece for two pawns. Uh, well, that might be okay. Take my pawn. Um...
Man, this is not going to be good. It's not going to be easy. Um, huh. I just might end up sacking my knight here. Yeah, let's do it. Only because this makes Black's task much more mentally exhausting. Checkmate! There we go. Hey, Sneech. Good to see you here. <laughs> uh, yeah, so when, when it's clear you're going down, go down in flames, guys. None of this... Mel um, none of this... Uh, what's the word? Monotonous stuff. Of, oh, I'm going to see if I can just hold on and... Remain down a pawn and see, like, if I can somehow um, grind my way to a draw. No, you gotta play for everything, man. All the marbles. Okay, so we got a fried liver ish. Something looks different about this one. Something looks different. Oh, you are done with this tournament. I don't blame you if you played for 12 hours. I started kind of recently here. Uh, by that I mean I've been going for like two hours. Okay, so... I'm probably giving a knight back somewhere. I might be giving more than that. Uh, knight's pin. Oh, that I see. Both of my knights are pinned. I kept switching back from one to the other to the one to the other and trying to figure out how do I get out of these pins. Um, I think this is an answer. Though in most fried livers, this doesn't work, so it's probably not working here either. I just am not seeing its refutation. Alright, so... I mean, I, I saw this possibility and just wagered that I would have enough to make something of it. It appears I don't. Oh, well that's something. That's definitely something. Take my pieces. There we go. Okay, so I'm in 408th place with 91 points. My opponent has a lot of points, or I assume he does, or I wouldn't have... I might have got a different person paired with me. Um, so... He must have been just playing lots and lots and lots of games this event. Okay, we'll take the Rook, Castle... Our opponent's not doing bad. At least time-wise, he's keeping up. Um, in other regards, he might be falling behind here, but time-wise, he's keeping up with the pace. Okay, I'll take a Pawn. It's not normally how I'd go about this. I'm gonna sack stuff to stop this attack. Um, here, take my rook. I don't need it. Ooh. 
You are going to take my pieces, or I'm going to force you to. I'm not helping you attack me. got me. Well played, sir. I question that 1500 rating of yours. Um, I knew something was up, but I didn't know what. Because, like, there's no way it would just pair me with an ordinary 1500. Some of these 1500s are pretty legendary in their own ways. I have to take that, though I'd prefer not to. I can't go fishing pole variation stuff either. Yeah, I mean, occasionally you will get paired with somebody who actually is as strong as their rating suggests. No more, no less. Um, and sometimes you will get those pairings that are easier, but it's not common. And I wouldn't have expected to see it so soon in the tournament. All right, this is a mm, it's a pin, but he's able to break the pin. I thought I was doing awesome there, and I'm not. All right, so I've got two open lines. I can do pretty much anything on. I have to take this and check. I want this square. He's not going to give me it. Not voluntarily. Yeah, I played this to anticipate Rook G1. Why am I not just going here? I, I consider this a crazy detour, but I should just go the other way. This is much faster. Awesome, Sneech. Yeah. Welcome. Here. <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry, I don't... I'm lit, a bit preoccupied. Not speaking very clearly. Um, well, I think, yeah, you're running some really interesting music in your channel, and you're playing really well, really good chess games, too. So I don't see, like, why more people aren't following you. Uh, I guess with time they'll find you, I guess. Um, free pawn. Oh, there's always a cost to these things, isn't there?
I'm tremendously confused by this position. Yeah, so he gets um, my rook. Got a pawn breakaway going on. Can't even be sneaky about this, can I? I'll try. All right, I've unintentionally sacked my pawn. But fear not, this is the Bowden Kazirsky gambit. It's every bit as vicious as it sounds. Um, and I can't tell you how vicious it sounds, unfortunately. So I've emerged up a pawn from a gambit. That happened. Oops, that would lose material, so we'll step back this way. And then win material. See, winning material is better than losing material. I don't know how many seconds a rook is worth, um, but I guess my opponent didn't care to find out. This is the way I play against this opening. Um, it's probably incorrect, but I don't know why. And so until somebody shows me why I can't play this, I'm just going to keep playing it. Maybe the reason not to play this is it might be less um, ambitious somehow than other variations. Um, as in it might offer less chances than most variations offer. Oh, really? So this thing that I invented on my own, this G3 Nidorf, might be okay. I can... I'm happy with that. Um... Yeah, I can definitely accept that. So my knight wants to go to e4. This is one way to get the knight to e4. If he plays c5, I can just go to F, uh, d5 instead of uh, e4. Is he going to barricade his bishop? He is. I'm 
mate in one. Oh, also, I'm, yeah, nice. Actually, for yeah, for a blitz game, that was remarkably sound. I wish I had added that to my list of favorite games. Well, it's going to be hard to find that later. Okay, so I'll save uh, my profile page in another tab here. In fact, let me go back, uh, star this game, or bookmark it. Accidental Eliakin for the win! Um, or Eliokin. Uh, yeah, if you have to say it the way that Zug says it. It's probably incorrect in some way, but who knows. Um, B5. Standard move in this opening. If you play it the way I play it. And you make mistakes. Um, okay, so it's hard to get much worse than what I've got here. Just in terms of a position. Um, yeah, I mean, you could lose material and probably still be okay, but this position might not be say, uh, salvageable. So look at me lift my rook to such strange effect. Um, knight to b8. There's a move you don't see every day. Again, unless you mess up openings like I do. <laughs> um, Okay. Man, this is not going to be salvageable in any respect. Um, the only reason I don't resign it instantly is because this is a tournament and... Well, shoot. Yeah, I should resign that. There's no coming back from that. Oh yeah, we get another end game. Who doesn't love end games? Discovered attack? Oh. Man, I thought that I was going to get some cool discovered attack chain going, not just checkmate him. Um, I was counting on queen d1, and then I'd follow up and discover an attack, and it'd be beautiful. 
But no, he went and grabbed the pawn. Oh, we're just gonna win the tournament, you know. That's all. That's all that's up. Just winning a marathon, like we always do. Kinda of hard for Black to stop this attack. Meanwhile, my knight stops both of his rooks. Um, all right, but is this knight trapped now? Does it matter which rook goes back? I'm not sure. We're gonna move this rook back then, in case it does matter, and I need my rook way out on a7 as distant as possible from all of Black's pieces. Oh yeah, it's a 24-hour marathon. Um, it's the autumn marathon. I guess it must be a seasonal thing. And I'm guessing that they do these once each season. Uh, at any rate, I seem to be doing pretty good for having started um, about 18 hours late. Yeah, that move doesn't work. Because now he can block on the square and I take his rook. And that's the best outcome he can hope for. Although realistically, well yeah, I guess I should just take the rook because I'm still threatening mate. I was going to say there is a way I could force off all the rooks, but um, it's the same difference. So that's what he'd prefer to do in any event. Uh-oh. I have mixed up my opening systems. I'm going to be in a world of hurt this game because I played my bishop out and I fianchettoed here. Um, yeah, that's not good at all. <laughs> oh yeah, and don't forget that No Joke also runs his weekly chess ladder tomorrow.
Um, so you wouldn't want to miss that either. But, yeah. A chess slave? I'm the one winning the games, am I not? Correct me if I'm wrong, sir, but... Would not the slave be the one who ends up, um... Not winning. What place am I in? I don't even know. Well, the Llama Lord has about 400 points, and I think I'm about 300 points short of that. Um... He might play f5 here. I might play f3. Okay, so I'm going to let him take my f-pawn, but not with my king stuck in a corner. My king's going to fight his own battles. I know etiquette demands otherwise that the rest of the army go fight the battle for him, but, you know, this king just has his own way of doing things. He's Rambo. He's going to do everything all by himself. Look at him go. Yeah, 24-hour marathon sounds quite exhausting. That's why I started like 18 hours after the tournament started. Um, it just seems a lot less exhausting when you're able to cut out 18 hours of it. And I'm still trying to catch up with the Llama Lord, and we'll see if I get there. We'll see just how close I can get. Um, I'm not doing too badly, circumstances considered. Alright, so the king's going to go take the A-pawn. And if his rook moves away, I've got all kinds of tactics lined up. So his rook's not going to move away. I'll also give my bishop a back door. Um, I should have just attacked this directly. What am I thinking? Here we go. If he does king f5, I just take the pawn check, and he goes back, and I take his other pawn. Check. And he goes back, and I take his other pawn. And then we go check again. If I can trap that bishop, I'll be a lot better off than otherwise. Okay, bishop's trapped. Now we can just take this pawn and promote the A pawn.
Oh, yeah, if you guys look between rounds, you can find out where I'm standing in the event. Or you could go to the main page and look up my name here and see, like, where I'm at. Um, I haven't really been paying attention to that lately, although I'll try to remember to check for it. Bishop takes, knight takes. Oh, hello. I gave up some material. That's what I get for being creative. Yeah, this, this is going to be hard to find a way out of. Oh, that fork doesn't actually help me, does it? I'm sorry, that my taking on e4 attacking stuff gains me no initiative whatsoever. Just trying to keep the pieces moving here. It's difficult to force your piece, opponent's pieces to move um, when you don't want to trade.
took me a minute to find that Queen H1 check, and I thought I was thinking, surely I had something lined up here. Yeah, that was exciting. Wow. All right, MCJGP got me last time. Maybe he can get me to accidentally play something I don't want to play again. Uh, we're going back to the Budapest. It worked well the first game. It might work this time. Knight uh, f6. d5. Alright, so last time here, what happened? Um, he tried to trap my knight, and I forgot about knight a3 and all that stuff. Um, yeah, what do I do here? I think this is a critical position. Well, I have to allow knight a3, don't I? Except I could give back an exchange, like so. Pawn power! No, it's, seriously, this might work. So. I wouldn't sack a knight in the corner if I didn't feel I got something for it. Um. Yeah, this is getting more and more interesting each time we play it. And unlike the times that he had the Frankenstein Dracula with Zug, and he just rolled me every single time once he finally got it figured out, um, these are actually pretty exciting battles.
Man, that's got to hurt. To have played so well and still get crushed anyway. Mad props to the Llama Lord for hanging out in like ninth place or yeah, he's still in ninth. He's at four hundred points. I'm at I lost count. Uh, we'll find out after this event. He's at four hundred though. I was just looking at my position, not my points. D five, please. Can we get a D five and can we get a fried liver? Yes. Let's fry this liver. Fried liver every time. Oh, okay, sideline fried liver. And ever since I lost an over-the-board game against a guy who played this line, I've wimped out into this silly endgame. But, I mean, white's still a pawn to the good. Still has excellent chances here. I've never gone back and learned all the fried liver theory just to cover this stuff. Mate in one. What else I just take here? Ah, uh, no mate in one. Uh, I didn't see that. So I guess it's true the chess players do have blind spots. Um, what gets me about this position is I can't really do much other than push my A pawn. Like, any attempts to do something proactive puts my pieces on the wrong squares. Oh, it's a pin! Oh! Oh my, did I luck out. Not only that, it's a pin, and the king cannot protect the bishop. So it's just a matter of time. No, he had king f5. That's why he played into that line. Um, all right, choose a file, sir. This is better. All right, 284th place. Oh, I'm at 119 points, and Llama's at 400. So I'm not really gaining on him.
Oops! Well, shit. Well, that's not at all what I intended. Um, not what I had in mind, anyway. Okay. Well, we'll see how this goes. Yeah, he could have taken h4 and completely stopped my attack. Uh, he didn't, but he could have. Um, Alright, I'm pushing h3 even though I don't really have enough force to back up this kind of crazy attack. Um, I'm quite stumped as to what to do. Oh, I sacked a rook. Hopefully that's okay. I'm not going to take this lying down. I'm going to sack again. This sack actually might work. Probably not, but maybe. I'm also way down on time. Um, but having two rolling pawns is worth something. Having two rolling pawns... Oh, shit. Never mind. Yeah, he's got me. He has got me really good. Yeah, okay, I'll concede that. Uh, so ends my winning streak of four games in a row. That's why I'm at 119 points and Llama's at 400. We get MC yet again. Oh, we're going to go into this, I guess, a third time. Okay. So he's not going to push his luck with all that stuff again.
Okay, so the trick with these bishop end games is get your bishop on the other side of the board. Because bishops don't block pawns very well. <laughs> Can I get him to flinch? That's the question. And he does flinch. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, poor, poor MCGGP. Poor MC. He's so close. It's so difficult to play these end games. Yeah, that's a major ouch. Yep, tough break. But we play. We play to the bitter end. And sometimes I win those. Poor MC. Take my pawns. You know you want them. Well, you have to set traps like every single move, and eventually they'll fall for something. Hi, Vey. I just allowed an interesting trap, did I not? So, because of back rank made threats, I have to give back the piece.
But yeah, if you know all the subtleties in the games, you know what risks to take and which ones not to take. And it's a matter of staying in the game long enough to take all the risks that you need and waiting for the blunder to happen. Like here, my opponent's trying to play quite solidly. Um, and unless I provoke something, he's just going to slowly realize his plan of making boring moves and nothing happening. He's being very cautious. And so, consequently, for me to get any kind of advantage, I have to constantly be stirring something up here. but also not stirring it so much that I end up losing the game. It's tricky to strike that kind of balance. I don't know why my opponent's rated 1491. Maybe he's new to the site. He's not playing like most 1491's play. The tricky tactic was that this is check and could win back the bishop after it takes my knight. He sees all these things, but he doesn't see that I can take his knight in one move. Either or maybe he just moves slowly. I don't know. Sometimes it's tricky to explain the rating system. Ratings are complicated. Um, so I'm going to check him, if I can, and get some pieces traded. and go back here. And he's going to try to stir something up. I don't know what. But I've certainly complicated his task. Um, and just that my position looks really solid. It has no entry points. There we go. And he checks, and now I go take his pawn. Take my knight. Okay, fine, don't take my knight. So yeah, I've got 127, and I think the Llama Lord has 400-something points. Um, so it must have, been, must have gotten more difficult to score points throughout the tournament.
Man, Pot Pie, I don't know why he goes Berserk against me. Um, it doesn't seem like a very bright thing to do. Unless, like, you're super confident that you could win this. Um, I know I shouldn't have done that sack. I could not help it. Yeah, okay, he got me. If he weren't able to promote that, maybe I could have stopped him, but he got me. Oh, we got King's Crusher. He's got quite the loyal following. Can't take there. You know, I guess I'm going to exchange in the center.
He gets my pawn, but I get some initiative. Can my knight not find a single home anywhere on the board? Ah, and that's why he's King's Crusher. I've gotten him a couple times, but yeah. He clearly just wiped me off the board there. Mate and one. I like this game. It's strongly modeling after what was in one of um, Graham Burgess's books. Uh, what was it? The Mammoth Book of Chess. Um, and I think that volume I was looking at had some addendums. And that knight e6, knight b6 mate is, if not the same exact position, it's very close. That was played in a game between at least masters, I think. Or at least one master and or one expert or something. Um, in any event, it's not an original idea, is my point. Oh, right. Right, right, right. So, I forgot he could take back that way.
Hmm. I seem to have a dilemma here. And that's that I'm losing all my pieces for all kinds of reasons here. Unless I do that and get superbly lucky. Um, where now he has to give up a bishop for two pawns. Or a bishop for nothing. Or one pawn. Yeah, I guess that's a third possibility. Um, so tempted to sack everything, but I just don't need to. My position's strong enough that sacking is unnecessary. Check. And if he goes to the corner, he gets mated. <laughs> Drunk Tall asks, Hi, I lost 45 rating points in this tournament. May I please have them back? Yeah. It's not how the tournament works. I suppose I could have taken b3. I was busy worrying about not getting checkmated. Um, okay. If he resigns, I'll take it. Not sure what my opponent's planning. 
Maybe we'll find out in the next few moves. Assuming, of course, that he is planning something. Maybe I could have sacked on h2. Um, hmm. Let's see, do I have checkmate? No, we'll just take the queen. I'll take that and just win this normally. Against this pesky little bugger who doesn't know how to resign. Well, I don't blame him, because I mean, I've played out a lot of games, but... Um, I also recognize when I'm outclassed, and I try to throw, like, the kitchen sink at something, as opposed to accepting a lost position and just hoping my opponent runs out of time. I think there's a, a huge difference in approach there. There we go. So I've got one four in a row, I'm at 140 points. I'm guessing that the Llama Lord's probably still sitting on 400. Yeah, 407. Must be just really difficult to make it up to the top. But once you're there, it seems equally difficult to remove you from the top, because nobody can, like, win a game in faster than a minute or two. He's going to play rook... no, he doesn't play rook d1, so now I have this threat. Um, I have to move that to lift my bishop. Yeah, now I can play bishop e6, and I'm not sure where we're going. I get my pieces developed, you get your pieces developed, and we play a chess game. If F3, I've got this. I've got this. Yeah, it's amazing. 600 points. How many wins is that, I wonder? That would have to be at least 120, probably 150 wins. No, probably more than that, probably on the order of 200, because not every one of those is going to be double points. Worst case, 600 means um, 300 wins. And if that's what happened, that's quite a feat.
He wants to kick my queen. Yeah, he's, he's actually got an interesting material imbalance here. Uh, two bishops for a queen is not so easy for the queen to win. The thing that's greatest in my favor is the time situation. At least with regard to a blitz game, that's what's kind of important here. Okay, I lift that so I don't get back rank mated ever. Unless, like, his bishop makes it onto this diagonal, but, and I completely ignore it. Here, yeah, let's trade some stuff. Oh, let's check. But it's not legal. This pins that, so if he takes there, I take the rook. I forgot he could take on e3. Already that makes this difficult for white.
Well, this is the plan. I'll stick with the plan here. I'm not... I wish I better knew what was happening. I could do this. I don't know if it's any good. can still shuffle my knight this direction. Rook d7, we trade rooks, and I just take d6, so... Um, oh, but this seems to work, too. Nice. Uh, so where am I? I'm probably 220th or something. Basically, everybody's in a mode where they win two and lose one, and win two and lose one. Nope, don't want to exchange that piece. Like, I don't even know this opening. Um, I would appreciate if my opponents would stop playing this crap, though. But I guess this is what people who play three minute play. This is what works for them until they get somebody with my rating, and then it just doesn't work anymore. They're unafraid of positional grinds, which, I mean, tends to be my forte here where we get to an end game and I just grind somebody down and magic tactics appear. Um, I mean, I tend to do that a lot. It's just frustrating that other players are doing the same thing. Win two, lose five, draw one, lose three. Ah, that's painful. I'm just puzzled how the Llama Lord's hovering at 409 points, and yet he remains in ninth place. Like, I guess time is not passing his, at the same pace for all of us or something. Okay, we're going to break that stupid back rank mate threat um, and promptly give away material in doing so.
Uh, are you serious? Am I losing a second piece here? I can't avoid it. That's horrendous. Two trapped pieces in one game. Um, okay, so I'm down a queen for a bishop. And a bit more than that. And I have a trapped knight. This is wonderful. So now I'm down three pieces or something like that. Um, either my opponent really knows a French, or I've just screwed this up. I mean, the two aren't mutually exclusive. And I, I'm not going to throw an accusation in here. So I'm just going to sack all my pieces, apparently. So that's how I do. There we go. I pulled through somehow. It's unfortunate it came to that. Yeah, just the way he played that really teed me off. And I wasn't going to go down uh, without a fight there.
Yeah, I'll just concede that because he's clearly winning that. I can only stave off mate for a few dozen moves. And it's just not worth it at that point. There we go. Yeah, it's a bit crazy that only the top 50 get a trophy. Oh, that must be why it's so difficult to ascend the ranks. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. But, like, people who aren't going to get a trophy are going to keep dropping out. Which makes the remaining games that much more challenging. Um... Okay, where's Nightbot when we need it? Nightbot should have been there for me. Yeah, people will do anything for those virtual trophies. They stack up really nicely on the virtual shelves. You can show them all to all of your virtual friends. Still, I mean, as the player count for each one of these marathons doubles, should not also the number of trophies awarded be doubled? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a tougher question than I imagine it is. It sounds easy to me. You want to encourage participation, and if only like the top few people get something, you're not going to encourage participation that way. Yeah. I mean, why not, right? How much does it cost to make these virtual trophies anyhow?
My opponent's trying to get me to budge an inch, and I'm not budging. No budging here. E file is gonna be mine, and I'm not gonna concede anything other than my king being on g2, now going back to f1. But that's not really a concession. That's just repositioning toward the center. I don't want to concede any space in this endgame. Because space is going to be difficult to conquer. Now I want this pawn. I'd be very happy with the queen trade. He's not going to oblige me. I hate to say send my queen off wandering like that, but I'm not seeing another way um, to make some progress. There we go. 200th place. Now, llamas, the llama lords have been playing this tournament forever. And I've been going for four hours, and I'm in 200th. And maybe if I manage to make it to 100th in the next hour, I'll just keep going. Um, I'm not sure what to do at this point. I'm hoping for pairings that'll be easier, but um, nothing can be guaranteed. There we go. That's a relief. I check on F2 or F4. I don't have a follow up. Alright, so I'm threatening Queen E3 mate. And I gave back some material. So I've got three pawns for a bishop. Oops, I can't move that where I thought I could move it. Um, that's kind of a problem. So here we're going. So three pawns for a bishop is some compensation. And my rook doesn't make much difference on either square. I'm going to pick this rook. You know that whichever one I pick, I will regret it. And this guy's good. Okay, so I need some kind of shot to show up.
need to give my rook a square to go to. Nope, not doing that. Um, this is all I can aim for at this point. I'll concede this. If only because I can only draw it. I can't win it. So that ruins my winning streak again. Um, I'm playing at 2100 now, apparently. Or at least that's my performance. I'm sorry, that's my actual rating. Okay, I'll let this guy do what he wants. Not even going to take the rook, because my, uh, my knight's worth more than the rook at this point. Okay. That takes us up to 200th place. 158 points. Oops, well, he went berserk. I did not. Um... Okay, 192nd place. The Smurf. Oh, not to be confused with Smurf 42. Or, I'm sorry, does Sumpf. Huh. Yeah, I think going berserk is just a fun thing to do. Um, it certainly encourages blunders and encourages opponents to hang in there in positions where they're objectively lost. So, um, I'd say only use it for fun and don't take it seriously. Going berserk is not a winning strategy.
If he takes c3, I could do queen takes c3. Okay. Still threatening mate. There it is. All right, I'm 185th place. Um, working my way up. Still, I could never ever catch the llama lord. He's at 400 something. You know, I'm not sure that you get paired with opponents that are around your position. At one point, I thought that's how this worked. Um, I guess to some small degree that's true, but it's not as simple as it is in a Swiss tournament. Um, so that closeness factor doesn't play as much of a role uh, in the pairing as I thought it might. Um, It's one important square. That is definitely one important square. Okay, we'll block that square. Not threatening a thing. Nothing at all. Other than this. Which might actually be relevant. I feel so bad for him. But, I mean, you don't move your king this far forward and expect nothing to happen. Okay, so we'll blockade this square again. Yeah. Tough break. <laughs> Blitz is hard. And I hate doing that kind of defensive stuff, but sometimes opponents require me to do it. Wait, okay, I was going to say, surely my opponent will move. He's got too high of a rating and too much at stake for him to not move. Um,
Oh, he avoided a draw, um, so I guess mission accomplished, right? Damn it! Can I curse or not move faster? Uh, I missed my one chance that game to promote the pawn because I wasn't paying attention. Still, I had him. 
And that's why I don't play without increment. But I'm sitting at 177. I was saying um, <clears throat> half hour ago, if I don't break 100th place, it's probably not worth my continuing to try to get a trophy. Because um, I'm not going to get the pairings I need to get there. So now the if I do continue playing, it's for the sake of discovering just how close I could have gotten. Um, and it, I mean, my continuing validates that this approach just doesn't work. You need to play more of the event than I played in order to be able to score enough to earn a trophy. Six hours is not enough. Unless you win every single game. Um, and then, even then, it might not be enough still. We're all bad at chess in our own ways. If you've been watching, you've, you've seen all the blunders I've been making. It's not the first time I've played queen takes bishop in that situation. Um. Thank goodness his knight cannot check me. Yeah, I'm disappointed, though, um, that my approach didn't work this time. I think last time I tried something very similar to what I did this time. And last time I did earn a trophy, and this time I didn't. I forget some of the specifics, though, so maybe I played more last time than I'm playing this time. Um... But yeah, I think last time I did play just six hours of it and managed to work my way up to the top. This time it's just not happening. On the plus side, I am getting a very high win rate. Um, and winning games is fun. Though at times winning games can be challenging or frustrating. Um, but overall, it's more fun than losing. Man, I'm up 116 points from my normal rating. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that um, the event does very much to try to cluster you by people within, like, 100 points. It seems like they try to cluster you with people who are, like, within 400 points of your rating or something like that. Maybe 300. Okay, Repco goes berserk. I wouldn't recommend doing that, but he's doing it. 
Okay. There's a lot I don't know about Queen Pawn openings, by the way, so the fact that I'm sacking this pretty casually doesn't mean that I actually know what I'm doing. It just means that I have a strategy. Um, and that strategy involves exploiting or trying to push my opponent over on the clock while simultaneously making all kinds of ridiculous threats that would never work. Um, or rather, whose workingness does not really as relevant as the fact that I'm moving quickly and it forces my opponent to think. Um, I just uh, say, trading into a rook endgame um, after going berserk does not seem... I don't know. It does not seem like something that could produce a victory. Yep. <laughs> oh, playing Masters is fun, you say. Okay, well, that's good. Man, I win two, lose one. Win two, lose one. Win two, lose one. That seems to be my MO. Except in the rare cases where I win the game in between, also. Man, it's taken a while to climb the ladder, though, because pairings aren't the fastest. Well, I should reason that at a rate of, say, 10 games per hour, because um, that's really what 3-minute does, it's right, roughly around 10 to 12 games per hour if you consume the entire available time. Let's just rough... Uh, round that up to 15 games per hour. Um, and if I win half of those, we'll say that I score three points or something on average. Um, 
I'm just trying to do the math to figure out how close am I. It sounds like nowhere near close, because just 3 0 is kind of slow compared to the bullet marathon I played in. Um, our standings really changed quickly there. Why do I play this line when I end up pointing my pawn on f3 or e3 on any event? Why do I play this? I should be playing bishop e3 like I normally play. Um, there's bishop e3. Um, okay, we'll stick my knight out here because uh, I'm gonna grab some space, I guess. Okay, we'll sack the knight, because that seems fun to do. Also, because I think it works. Um, minimally, I could do bishop takes, and then I've got all these discoveries, and I've got bishop takes rook. But maybe it's stronger than that. Okay, there's nothing he can do to attack my queen, so let's attack his rook. Looks like I got him. Oh yeah, we got him, boys. There we go. Wow. What a game. Alright, so I'm at 180 points. Still, I'm nowhere near where the Llama Lord's at. Um, okay, I have to start guessing where to put the rest of these pieces. It's generally a really terrible thing to do. Well, this is what I intended with c5. Um, again, I don't like guessing where these are supposed to go. It's much more comfortable to have an idea than to just like randomly plunk them down and see if that formation works. But I haven't failed yet, so that's good. I guess I'm threatening this, aren't I? Alright, so we got an end game. Oh, hang on. I've got a tactic that gets us to a different end game. So now we got a four rook end game. If 
First, I have to make sure not to lose my king. And it looks like I can just defend these pawns. If rook d7, I've got a5. If rook d6 to follow, well, I've got other rook moves. Um, GG. To the victor go the spoils. Hundred fiftieth place is mine. Wow, what a game. What a show. What an exercise and if you're going to try to beat your opponent on time, at least move quickly. And don't make bad moves.
Oops! He could play e4 there. I don't know if I should be trying to provoke that or not. Given that I don't know, the answer is probably you shouldn't be doing that. So, that said, um, what do I do? Oh, I can't get away with taking that. I can take this, though. Oh, well, we'll see, Sneech, we'll see. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. I think it depends if I just keep playing. Um, I am working my way up the rankings quickly, I will admit. But I don't know if it's going to be quick enough to catch anybody. Well, this got pretty intense.
All right, forward we go. 145th place. Man, this is tough. Three minute isn't as fast as it sounds, or isn't as um, fast as it sounds. Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, I've got a castle. I might not be winning this one. see. I have to apologize for the lack of commentary. I just can't keep up at the rate of the things I'm thinking. And I've got no time to both commentate and move. Honestly, I don't know what to do with this position.
hate to be that guy, but sometimes that's the only way to go forward. If your opponent just dawdles the entire game and doesn't make constructive moves, um, winning on time is viable. Oops. I just feel like this must be right. Um, it, it does too many positive things for this to be a mistake. Um, So the immediate threat is trading rooks, rook c8, bishop h6, winning the bishop. Um, also, just pushing the pawn. Oh my goodness, he missed rook b1 check. Either that or he thought it wasn't good enough. I'm not convinced. It looked good enough to me. Whoops. Maybe even this. Usually that's not a threat, but here it might be. In light of all the weird things that are going on here. Or I could just take the knight, you know? <laughs> oh no! Oh, I missed a free piece. No. Okay, that's fine. It's just a sign that I'm moving too quickly, or I'm just tired. The Llama Lord has ascended to 8th place. 422 points. Hmm.
Yeah, he touched the wrong piece or something. There's no way he intended to allow all this. Um, I don't even care about my pawn and all that. I just want to shatter this position. Now I start to care about the pawn because it's my main asset here, other than the bishop and three pawn advantage I hold. Kudos to my opponent for coming up with good constructive moves, despite having like no pieces. That's not an easy task, and he's doing it quite well. It's just it's not going to be enough for this position. He really hung in there. I've made point two hundred. There we go. Oh my goodness, I've played, I've won, I can't even count that. I can't count that. That looks like nine in a row. We're going for ten. Gotta take that. Yeah, thanks, Nietzsche. I assure you it was not easy. And there have been many fun circumstances along the way. Oh, I walked into a knight fork, which my opponent did not use. Yes, you did believe in me. Um, I'll take that. Get my other rook 
moving Well, this is going to be one tough end game. I want to use my king. Just keep moving my king forward. And ideally, I want to play king e6 and box his king in. And then my knight can go mop up some pawns. There's one pawn. Yeah, that was quite the accident on his part. He was trying to play quickly to flag me, or at least to not run out of time. Um... I'm only 2,000-something, although apparently this tournament, my rating has gone through the roof. So apparently I've, like, hit a new level or something today. Or I've just happened upon just exactly the right time control. Um. Okay. This is bad. Big question. Where to go? All right, here we go. Betting it all on black. Let's hope it doesn't come up red. Daddy needs a new pair of shoes! <laughs> uh, yeah. It's professional chess commentary at its finest. Um, but no, seriously, the way I'm playing this is insanely risky. 
And hopefully some of that risk is justified. <laughs> well, there's no possible way that the entire risk could be justified here. Okay, thank goodness. We reach an end game and I haven't been wiped off the board just yet. Stop bishop e5. Um, target that. And hopefully get my other rook out. Why didn't I play a5? Oops. Well, that's no good. That won't do at all. Um. Okay, we're going to pretend that didn't happen. I don't understand why he wouldn't go for a draw there. That makes win number 10. So I'm standing in 125th place. Um, hmm. That's weird. Is that a queen trap? Wow! Oh, did white deserve that? Accidental queen trap for the win! Alright. Eleven in a row. Wow, Brainy Smurf is catching... Well, he's done quite well, too.
12 in a row, guys. This is kind of unprecedented for me on Lee Chess. Um, my rating's approaching 2200. I am doing something right these games. Either that or it's just my day. That could be it too. Um, oh, we got an Italian opening, guys. Guys, this is my opening, so if I lose it, oh boy, do I deserve it. <laughs> Well, I think the conclusion is that I deserve this loss. I'm pretty sure this is trending toward a loss. Um, <clears throat> it sucks to lose in my own opening. But I did make a bad move. I made an atrocious move this game. So I deserve to lose it. Um, yeah, I forgot. I mixed up that you can't play h6 and castle. You have to ch choose one or the other. Um, I chose both.
Holy crap. That that was really intense. I'm pretty sure I was dead lost somewhere in there.
All right, Elite Chess Master has stopped my reign of terror. Oh my goodness. What a game. What a game. So I've made it to 113th place with 220 points. Yeah, he's good. I've played him before. I think I have. I forget if Leech Us indicates that I have. Okay, thank goodness. I could have... I need that to get back up to um, the top. It is cool that I've made it to the top 100 um, just in the last six hours. But yeah, there's no way I'm committing an entire day to play in the event. Um, that's just more than I can handle at this time. takes it. Why? Why take? You killed the golden goose, man, so you better have something for it. Um... Oh, I, I should have played a4. I allowed my opponent to play a4, and this makes things complicated. This does stop knight d5. Um, so I think the e-file might open. Oops, that's a fork. That's a fork if there ever were a fork. Uh, I cannot take the pawn. That's a huge bummer. Huge disappointment, because, I mean, yeah, all kinds of tactic tactics and things hung on that in the balance. Um... All right, I'm sacking my knight. Or apparently I'm not. He doesn't want my knight. There's counterplay. I was going to say, it's not fair that he gets all the play and I get no counterplay. Um, and then I found some counterplay. Man, this is going to get ugly. Oh wait, wait. No, I'm I'm fine somehow. I thought uh, my rook would be pinned at this point. It's not pinned. I'm still not dead yet. I get to suffer on a bit longer. Um,
There we go. That's a draw. One point's better than no points. Castle. Castle Queenside. That's not a Queenside castle. Oops, there's my first dropped piece in many hours that my opponent actually spotted and probably will go on to win because of. I do have to qualify it like that because I've dropped many pieces and I just i am not letting myself remember it. Um. Alright, there we are with another half point. Still up 165 rating points from the start of the event. This, this particular line of the Danish is really annoying for white to meet. Um, because I've more or less forced a queen trade. Um, and it's hard to checkmate your opponent um, without the queen. I suppose I have given back the pawn, so it's not the worst thing for him, but um, Black sure gets a lot of play in this line of the Danish Gambit. I goofed in that I'm not winning a pawn. I was certain that I was winning a pawn, and now I see that my certainty was completely unfounded. <clears throat>
I have to give up a pawn to save this end game. So I give up a pawn. <clears throat> Oh my god, I'm so dumb. I am so dumb. I am so dumb. Dumb, dumb, da dumb. Okay, well. That's too bad. I lost focus. So that's my first loss in a while, other than to Darius. And I, I mean, you know, Darius is quite good. Quite, quite good. I have no idea what's going on. It's probably not going to work out for me.
Oops! No, you could do rook takes. I am losing my mind. I am very rapidly losing my mind here. Um, I somehow thought that that was not doable on account of something that's not even there. Um, it's not even mate. Queen e8 doesn't even checkmate there. So yeah, I have no idea what happened that game. It would be a good idea for me to study that. Um, I just don't get it. So this is the pain <laughs> part of the tournament. Um, where I get paired against everybody who knows openings. And I get trounced in every opening that ever existed. Um, man, that's going to be something else. Um, I mean, there's only so much I can make up against these people. I can't invent new openings every game. Have I considered music? What music? Any music? I like... I know a lot of streams tend to play um, things I would never listen to. Uh, so I don't want to subject anybody else to the music that I listen to. But, oh, um... I guess in light of what you do, um, I actually do like the classical stuff you're, that's on your channel, but I suspect it's probably copyrighted because it's pretty good. Um, and the problem is I want to redistribute these videos, not just on this platform, but in other platforms. And so I run into copyright issues if I start doing that. At least I think I do. Arg. I have to bring my rook back to defend. Leaving wide open the A file. Um, got to push. I don't like it, but I must. I do not understand why he sacked the pawn. I'm sure there's justification. Yep, but now I see it. Oh, I see multiple things, and they're all frightening. So I need to do that so I can get my queen access to stuff. Um, holy moly, this is quite a cluster. So if rook d4, who knows what happens. I could pin the rook.
I think it's probably better for me to cover all the light squares and go back here. My pieces are just very luckily placed here. Um, mouse slip. Oh, shit. Wow. Game of the tournament right there. Unnecessary queen sack. To pr well, I don't even know. I, I don't know. I did the queen sack because there's no way he could have expected it. And he responded very well. Oh, man. Holy moly. I beat a Lee Chess Master. Oh. He can't be happy about that. That was a mouse slip. Um, I didn't really deserve that, but in Blitz, anything goes. So I can't feel too bad about it. <clears throat> oh. taking this because I don't know the night or um, so we're just gonna play this line that I made up which involves me taking your knight uh, and I want to make my opponent think for a change and if I play the same thing you've seen every single time he's not gonna be thinking I'm going to guess that Zug Addict has wrapped up his stream on account of people coming to my stream. It's probably a reasonable inference. Yeah, I'm really insanely lucky today. And even so, I can't break the top 100. Unlike the Llama Lord, who's just rolling the whole tournament. I'm, I'm impressed. I cannot count how many games I've played today. More than two. We'll go with that number.
Jeez. Not a moment to rest here. Good move after good move. Very impressive. Um, if I take that, I don't get mated, but... Well... I'm so close to getting mated. This pawn is an uber nuisance, and if possible, must be removed. got a perpetual because there's no way I can win this. Yeah, I just don't foresee anybody getting through the whole tournament with computer assistance. It would be very hard to disguise that sort of thing over the course of 100 games, maybe 200 games. Queen. I'm going to take your rook. If this knight moves, yeah, then I've got all kinds of mating threats. Yeah, I. that's a very good question. How do you manage to even... Like, the only way you could do it is with somebody behind your shoulder or something telling you what to do. And that's quite the setup. I mean, you could have, like, a, I guess, you could have something running on a separate computer. Um, just watching the game and somehow relaying to a program to tell you what are the best moves or something. Um, that's awfully sophisticated. And you'd probably get detected for playing the computer move if you were to do that. So it's kind of hard to do assistance unless you have a person who's like behind you doing the intelligent work of um, telling you what to do in positions that a computer would never get into. Alright, so I'm up one pawn. I'm going to castle this way anyhow.
free pawn. Maybe. Um, I guess I am threatening this one also. So I could take there. If he takes my bishop, I take here. Um, I could just recommend to anybody who hasn't played chess before, this thing about bringing your king out into the center of the board um, isn't always the best strategy. Sometimes it doesn't quite work out. I think he's got a draw, guys. I think he's figured it out. Or maybe he has not. Yeah, lifting that rook was a huge mistake, because now there's no perpetual. Used to have a perpetual... <laughs> Oh, he offers a draw. Now he missed his opportunity. Oh, no. Poor guy. Oh my god. I have hung everything. That was one move too slow. Yeah, there's no holding that. I have to resign. Yeah, but you're... You're talking about people using engine assistance within the context of a three-minute chess game. You don't have time to do that sort of thing against strong players. I encountered maybe one player in this entire tournament who might have been suspicious. Um, and I've played like a hundred games this event or so. Um, but yeah, if you're playing with an engine, um, that's a lot of manual work to keep up on two chessboards. There's no time to do that in the context of a three-minute game. At least not for the entire game there isn't. Especially if you're trying to go undetected and not play the best move so the game goes on quite a few moves. Uh, okay, we'll take up the knight.
your points will come back if you just play some more games. It's not that big a deal. Mate and one, so you can't take my pawn. Also, mate and one. I mean, if I played against a cheater right now, I don't know. Like, I've still gained 140 or 139 rating points this event. Um. So it's not like my rating's suffering because some cheater beat me and took some points, because it's completely not what happened. I can't calculate this anymore. I'm just playing.
I saw that after I moved. Oh, I was so excited about Ricky too. I thought I was getting somewhere. Friendly fire. How am I getting... Okay, I don't know. I just don't know anymore. I got paired with somebody way up, or paired up, not way up, I guess. He only outrated me maybe by a hundred some points. More like a hundred. Somewhere between a hundred and a hundred fifty. Um, oh, that's not book. It appears that Dugong Dugong might be my new nemesis. He seems to have a way of predicting what I'll do. Sucks. All right. Can I get back into the top hundred for the end of the event? You get dugong dugong again. Screw it. We're sacking the night.
Please give me a different pairing. Give me somebody I can beat. Don't give me Dugong Dugong a third time. I mean, I could have instant resigned that, maybe. There was... Yeah, okay, I'm not getting a new pairing. So that's it for the event. Yeah, I think I understand that um, the Llama Lord uh, clearly outclasses me in, in terms of being able to play Blitz. Um, so, that all said, I missed out on Zug stream. Um, let's hear how Zug Addict is doing. Wait, he must be streaming, right? There's no way he would play in this and... Okay, he must have folded up shop or something. I don't know, he must have had to go. So, let's tune into the Llama Lord. Lord of the Llamas. Well, well played one and all. Um, thanks for watching. I am tired, so I am logging off. Uh, hope to see you guys again, around again sometime. Wow, that sounded rather mechanical, but yeah. Thanks for watching. Have a good day, have a good night, have a good temporally accurate uh, valediction. And I'll see you guys next time.